but then you have tribulation and you have wrath. Those are two different words. But when you talk to a pre-tribber, it's, it's like wrath and tribulation are synonymous. Again, just like I talked about Christ and Lord. Wrath and tribulation are not exactly the same thing. That's why they're two different words. Uh, wrath, the, the wrath of God, that's, that is for the unsaved. And says in, in 1 Thessalonians, just a page back, in the, the 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, it says, we are not appointed to wrath. All right? And so we need to understand this, that we need to be, take the very word of God seriously. But they want to make a synonym out of wrath and tribulation and, and pretend like it's saying the same thing. Well, Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. It says, tribulation worketh patience. Tribulation is not a bad thing. Of course, it's not a good thing as far as we like trouble, but tribulation is good for us, and it's okay. Jesus said, in this world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so we need to recognize that, that tribulation is going to come. And even the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, I believe, which is an already past event, and I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, the tribulations that we experience, those are not uh, those are not something to be scared of as believers. The world hates tribulation. The world hates any kind of trouble. Uh, but the good news is, if you're saved, you are not appointed to wrath. Uh, you're not under the wrath of God. The wrath of God does not abide on you. Uh, the grace of God has saved you. And so no matter how much tribulation comes, and tribulation is coming, and is here, and is coming, and there's been tribulations for the last 2,000 years, uh, there's been tribulations in the Old Testament. The people were sawn asunder, as Hebrews 11 says. There's always been tribulation for God's people. But tribulation is different than wrath. And so I think, first of all, we need to define words and stick to them and not say we believe the King James and then change the meanings of the words. Don't say wrath if you mean tribulation, and don't say tribulation if you mean wrath. And then on top of that, don't capitalize tribulation. The Bible doesn't capitalize tribulation. The only time you'll ever find it capitalized is in the book of Romans, and it's only capitalized because it's the beginning of the verse. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been capitalized there. It's not the capital T tribulation, like it's some kind of a period. It's just tribulation. But we've allowed ourselves to get brainwashed by teachers and gurus and whatnot, many who are not even King James, and we fall into this brainwashing of calling it something it isn't. It's tribulation, but it's not the tribulation. And it's certainly not these three words together, the great tribulation. Nowhere in the King James Bible will you find the in front of great tribulation. Now, it's true that there are great tribulations, and there have already been some great tribulation. I think there was great tribulation in about 70 AD for the people in Israel, in, in Jerusalem. That was a time of great tribulation. I think that's what Matthew 24 was talking about there. And so the great tribulation, that, that phrase isn't in the Bible, but we get used to hearing it and believing it. Let me just use an example. The Great Depression. Well, we all know from history that there is a period of time back in the 1930s called the Great Depression. But you know what? A lot of people have Great Depression all the time. Great Depression might be something that someone's going through right now that's listening to us talk. But that's not a period of time in history or a future. That's just a condition that you're under, Great Depression. And you know what? When the Bible says great tribulation, that's what it's saying. It's just a condition you're under at this time. It's not setting up some special seven-year period of time. There is no the great tribulation, all capitalized. Someone did that. Someone did that in the notes of Schofield's Bible. Someone has done that in commentary, and someone does that in their teaching. And I believe we're not supposed to add to the Word of God. And when you add the in front of it, you make it some kind of event like the Great Depression. I hope that helps to understand and explain uh, what I'm saying about that and my viewpoint on that. 